What's up everyone, it's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about today and the time has officially come. Jackson Holiday is getting the call to the big leagues. The Baltimore Orioles are about to be even more stacked. Mike Trout just refuses to stop hitting home runs. He's now leading baseball in long balls. The Dodgers, they got the best start of Tyler Glasnow's young career and you do not want to miss it. He was locked in. And Shea Langoliers, we call him Shea Bangoliers. He was trying for three home runs yesterday versus the Rangers in one game. All of that in today's MLB recap. And just a reminder, I could not do any of this without you guys. Thank you for supporting. We're getting so close to 500,000 subs. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off your tickets. And use code Fuzzy on Underdog Fantasy. They'll match your first deposit up to $100. Before we show the Orioles and the Red Sox highlights, I got to talk about Jackson Holiday getting the call. The 20-year-old is MLB's number one prospect. So the number one and number two prospects, they're in baseball. Jackson Chorio and Matt Holiday. Not Matt Holiday, that's his dad. Jackson is the son of seven-time All-Star Matt Holiday, Jackson had seven extra base hits, two stolen bases, and a 9.55 OPS in spring. Then he goes to AAA, seven extra base hits, a 10.77 OPS in 42 at bats, so over 155 minor league games. Jackson hit 321 with 40 doubles, nine triples, 29 stolen bases, a 4.51 on base, and this is the year for Baltimore. You get Corbin Burns for this year and this year only. You got to go for it. Let's see the team that Jackson is joining, and because we just talked about Corbin, look at oh. Uh, Tyler O'Neill broke a windshield on that swing. That's his sixth home run already. He is primed for a massive payday if he keeps it up. Baltimore's offense is ridiculous, so one little measly run doesn't mean much. Mullins, he got on, he stole second base, and then he scored easily on a Colton Cowser RBI double. And no, you're not seeing the same clip. Colton, he doubled again. This time he drives in two. His opposite field approach is sick. Like, your grandpa's got to love watching him play. Earlier, we saw soon to be free agent Tyler O'Neill go yard. And before we show Corbin, Alley, he went up the middle for an RBI single. It's 4-1. 4-1 felt like a big lead for some reason, and that's probably because the other soon-to-be free agent was dealing. Corbin Burns found his groove after that home run to O'Neal. He strikes out Rafaela, and at that point, he had K'd six of the last 10 hitters that he faced. He leaves after seven innings of two-hit baseball. He has a 1.9 ERA through his first three starts as an Oriole. Kowser, he had a big four RBI day after that sack fly. Santander has 11 RBIs on the season. Mullins, he got in on the RBI action as well. Baltimore, they're 6-4. and four. The Red Sox are still 7-4, and four, but some devastating news. Trevor Story is out for the season. It's been confirmed that he's going to miss 6-7 to seven months with that shoulder injury. The on-screen graphics weren't even fully on the screen when Marcus Simeon jolted a first pitch double down the left field line. Josh Smith is looking super impressive to start the year. He's hitting 350 with 6 RBIs. He drives in Marcus, and then he got hosed by Shayling Lears. Talking about Josh Smith, not Marcus. Shea's arm is insane. He's averaging 85 miles an hour on his throws, which is a lot for a catcher because it's a quick snap of the wrist. You can't throw it 100 miles an hour. But this wasn't Shea Langoliers in this one. It was Shea Bangoliers. That's his first of a few home runs in this one. Jonah Heim, he got that run back. And his battery mate, Nathan Navaldi, he was pitching out of his mind. He almost went six innings, allowing just three base hits. He had eight strikeouts on the night. He left with a lead. And there it goes. Shea, he took an outside knuckle curve, 430 feet to dead center. His second of the night. Evan Carter, he smoked a cutter, his first home run of the year. He's been on base a lot with walks, but he's still searching for the pop that we saw last year. Maybe he was inspired by this guy, Shea, with his third home run of the night. Bangaliers was banging. Mason Miller, he towed the rubber for the save opportunity, and you cannot change the channel when Mason Miller is pitching 101 on the paint. He is one of the nastiest pitchers I've ever seen. That's his first career save, and the A's, they steal a W down in Arlington. The A's are now 4-7, and seven, and if that sounds familiar, that's that's because yesterday I said the Astros are 4-7, and seven, so if the Astros lose, the A's will move ahead of them, and Houston will be in last place. The Strohs were taking on Kansas City, but these aren't your normal lowly Royals. They're 6-4 coming into this one. Houston, they did start hot, though. Jordan, he doesn't care about lefty-lefty matchups or Cole Reagans breaking out. He singled in their second run, and later on, he wanted an extra base hit. That was a changeup outside the zone, basically in the other batter's box, and he almost pulled it for a home run. Any run allowed by Kansas City wasn't great because they had to face Christian Javier, and he had gone on like 16 innings without allowing a run to start the season, but the Royals, they started chipping away. They grabbed a run on a Michael Garcia sack fly. Bobby Wood Jr., he makes it a one-run game on a stand-up triple. He has some of the craziest tools this game has ever seen. Power, speed, arm, glove, the contact. It's finally coming around. He's a true five-tool megastar. The Royals, they're trying to tie it up, and Bregman, he just has to make the throw, but he can't get it done. It's 3-3 now. Bregman, he's going to redeem himself later. He nabs MJ Melendez to save a run in the sixth inning. This game's going to need extras. Houston 
Houston. They couldn't get anything going in the 10th. So Kansas City, they have a chance to 360 no scope off of Rust for the final kill cam. And Salvi with the salvation, he saves the team. Garrett Hampson can fly. Houston, they didn't even make the throw. The Royals are seven and four, where the Astros, they're four and eight. We know that the Astros are going to be fine, but this year they might actually have to worry about the Angels making some noise. Mike Trout has been making a lot of noise, make it back to back games with the blast. He's the first Angel ever to have six home runs in the first 11 games of a season. The three time MVP, he's back with vengeance. He pointed to his buddy named Colston, who he met prior to the game. Colston is about to undergo chemo, so. Excuse me while I go cry. Tampa Bay is going to try and tie it up as Jose Siri hit the gaps. And Curtis Smead, he was called out at first, but replay showed he barely got his little phalanges in there. He's safe. Siri ended up at third on a pass ball, and he scores on a Jose Caballero shallow knock. Deja vu happened later. Siri scores again on a knock from Caballero. This time, it's an extra base hit. Both teams, they traded runs, so now it's 4-3 in the seventh. Isaac Paredes, his fourth home run. He has 35 home runs and a 135 OPS plus over his last 155 games. Bro is a monster. Monster, and so is Miguel Sano. Well, at least he used to be. He struck out with a chance of walking it off. Pete Fairbanks, he was hyped up. That's his first save. The Rays, they're back to 500. They're 6-6. Six six. J-Rod is having a brutally slow start to 2024, and he's so streaky, it kind of hurts. That double play ends a threat in the third. Toronto said, thank you. They immediately rubbed it in J-Rod's face as Springer singles and Varsho. Bo, he stayed back and launched that Kirby changeup. Kirby's kind of been getting lit up this year. Even IKF was able to barrel him up. That's an RBI double. Springer grabbed another RBI. It's five to nothing off of Kirby while his dual mate Chris Bassett went six shutout and then the the Jays tried to get cute even though he was at almost 110 pitches like take him out the game he's in the red energy Dom Canzone he goes the other way Bassett still really good eight strikeouts over six and two thirds the pen bailed him out and uh, yeah then the pen made things scary but also like how did Mitch Haneker hit that ball out that changeup was almost at his belly button the Mariners are still fighting the red hot Josh Rojas is at the dish he might be cooling off because that double play seals it Chad Green gets the save. Toronto, they're now tied with the Rays at 6-6. Six and six. The Mariners, they fall to 4-8, and eight, but they'll be okay. Castillo and Kirby, they're going to wake up soon. Toronto is trying their best to keep pace in the AL East because everyone is 500 or better in that division. Probably never going to catch the Yankees, though, because that's not an easy home run. Verdugo hitting tanks off tough lefties. All we can do now is pray, and Miami fans were praying that did not leave, and it worked. De La Cruz, he robbed Stanton of a potential two-run home run, but Stanton is going to get some payback. He blisters a double the other way, and I haven't seen him look this healthy and pliable in years. Juan Soto, he refuses to get out. He makes it 3-0 Yankees. All of that for Rodon, who was looking light years better this year. He tossed six scoreless with six punch outs. I don't care about the Marlins record. That is huge for Rodon and the Yankees. 58 of his 89 pitches were for strikes. He lowers his season ERA to 1.72. The Marlins scratched together a few runs, but the cyborg, Clay Holmes, he didn't seem affected. He goes 1-2-3 on seven pitches. He has five saves. The Yankees are 10-2. They won four in a row. It's going to be this him and the Dodgers all year vying for the best record in baseball. And the Dodgers are also searching for their 10th W of the year. James Alman, he is heating up, folks. Back-to-back -back games with a home run. This time for three runs. Two more runners got on in the fifth. Will Smith, he steps up, and he's going to try and sneak one the other way. He does it. One of the best offensive catchers we've ever seen. Bro's hitting 400 with 12 RBIs. He has a career 127 OPS+. plus. Again, he's a catcher. Uh, by the way, this is bad. This is very, very bad for baseball. Tyler Glass now had 12 strikeouts over six scoreless. And because he was pretty efficient, his pitch count was low enough to go back out there. That's his 13th strikeout. Make it 14 strikeouts. He matches a career high with 14 strikeouts over seven shutout. That is just insane stuff. Imagine when they get back Walker Bueller and Clayton Kershaw. I mean, good Lord, that's going to be stupid. Minnesota, they could not be happier to see him leave. Jefferson at a home run. Correa, a daddy hack, 442 feet. And then there's another one, Alex Kirloff. He's hitting 355 with the 400 on base. Hello, Brogdon. He eventually settled down. He got the last out, but he had to really work for it. The Dodgers were technically the first to 10 wins. This one ended before the Yankees game, but the Dodgers needed 14 games to get 10 wins. The Yankees only needed 12. Ronald got one of the best jumps I've ever seen. The Mets are now 0 for 19 at throwing out runners to begin 2024. How is that even possible? I mean, that's like a fake stat, but it's real. That ball got tossed in a center, and Ronald, he probably could have scored anyways from first because he's that quick. Ozzy, he hit the gap for a double. Ozzy got on again later after he smoked a single. He got Ronald to third base, and Riley clutched up. Ronald scores and make it four hits in a row. Olsen, 
Four straight hits, like I said, one more scores, and there's another single. Ozuna makes it five hits in a row off the Mets. Atlanta, they're really trying to embarrass the Mets as Ronald swiped two more bases, three stolen bases before the fifth inning. Riley knocked him home. It's 5-0 Atlanta. Ronaldo Lopez has been insane as a starting pitcher because, of course, he has now that he's on the Braves. He tossed six shutout. He has a 0.75 ERA. That's one run in his first 12 innings as a Brave. The Mets were grateful he could not go more than six innings, and same for animal shelters across the country because Pete pummeled a long three-run home run. Pete is donating $1,000 for every home run that he hits, so another rack to animal shelters across America. The Mets, they put the pressure on again. They scored two in the ninth. Narvaez had a single. Lindor, he's been terrible as a lefty, and he got sawed off for just his second base hit from the left side. Can Pete clutch up again? Rizel got him chasing. The Braves, they're going to be right there with the Dodgers and the Yankees for the best record in baseball once it's all said and done. Milwaukee was cooking something early off of Frankie Montas. Blake Perkins poked one in the shallow center to score, and Yelich is seeing beach balls. It's quickly 3-0 Milwaukee. Cincy, they got one back, but Yelich said, gimme. He not only stole back that run that Cincinnati scored, he added to it. He had three RBIs on the day. He's hitting 325 with four home runs, nine RBIs, and two stolen bases. His exit velocities are insane as well. Glenn Perkins, he had a huge game. Three RBIs for him as well. The Brewers, they have like 11 fast twitch speed guys. Perkins, he's one of the fastest in baseball. Jake Bowers, he extends the Brewers lead by two. It's an 8-1 ball game. No, it isn't because South Freelick Lace went to center. The Brewers now have nine runs on the day, and it's cool that the Reds fought back. It was nice to see Tyler Stevenson play the two on a double down the line. Ellie, he grounded out for an RBI. Spencer Steer still rakes. I'll say that until he's not raking anymore, which could be in like 10 years if I'm still making these recaps. He's hitting 400 with 15 RBIs. That means he's on pace for 221 RBIs. There was a fun little comeback, but it wasn't enough. Abner Uribe, he struck out three in the ninth. No save, but he still ends it. The Brewers, they're four games above 500. They're seven and three. St. Louis is in the same division as both of those teams, the Brewers and the Reds, and they finally got their workhorse back. Sonny Gray's first start as a Cardinal. Nolan Gorman, by the way, he was two for two to start this game after that solo home run. He's got three on the season now. Sonny Gray, he was exactly as advertised. 75 million over three years. He earned it in this one. He completely shut down the Phillies offense. Five strikeouts over five, and now make it five scoreless after that double play. His presence should help out a ton. Hopefully he rubs off on the other pitchers and they stop being really bad. Rookie Victor Scott, he's secured his first RBI as a big leaguer on that sack fly to Brandon Marsh, and Marsh just airmailed it. Brandon Donovan with a little tap, tap, tap -a -roo. Name that movie in the comments down below. The St. Louis bullpen got themselves into a ton of trouble. That's a double play to Bryce Harper, and then there's a strikeout to end the sixth inning. Philly, they loaded them up in the seventh, but Jojo Romero, he clutched up two consecutive strikeouts to end the threat. Wheeler, he was still out there fighting. He almost had 110 pitches. He goes seven innings, but his offense cannot get anything going. Helsley, he struck out two in a breezy one, two, three, ninth inning, his fourth save. The AL East and the NL Central are the only divisions in baseball left without a losing team. The Cubs are in the NL Central, and they've been swinging some hot bats lately. Musgrove cooled them off a bit in the first. He strikes out Hap, he strikes out Cody Bellinger, and then he makes his own play. He scoots over to make the grab in foul territory. He went four shutout, and Cubs rookie Ben Brown, he kept up. He's trying to bounce back after an awful debut. He got some help from Nico Horner. He robs Tatis. Ben did go four shutout, just like Joe Musgrove, but Ben isn't going to go five. Joe Musgrove is, and Jan Gomes, he was fine with that. MLB's first ever Brazilian-born player. He's still rocking out at the age of 980, I mean 36 years old. Chicago, they kept it moving. There's a walk to Hap. Say, uh, he had three singles off of Musgrove. Joe, he then hit Belly's pinky toe, and the bases are... They're, they're not juiced anymore. Musgrove got relieved, and that's got a sting. The bullpen is supposed to save you, but instead, Morrell got four RBIs on one swing. Over his last 118 games, Christopher Morrell has 29 home runs and a 130 OPS plus. He is budding into a legit offensive superstar. Best part is, he's limiting the strikeouts. He has five in 11 games. Knock on wood, so I don't jinx it. The Padres got one run on the day off the bat of Eggy Rosario, the pinch hitter. The Cubs staff was just electric. They punched out 11, only walked two over nine. The Cubs are fourth in Team OPS and now 13th in Team ERA, so this helped out their ERA a lot. San Francisco is trying to get a little rally going. Mike Yastrzemski finally did something. He's been terrible, but he singles to get Tyro Strada to third base, and that set up a sack fly for Patrick Bailey. It's 1-0 Giants. Oh my God, forget what I just said. CJ Abrams to deep space, 425 feet on that perfect, perfect home run off a lefty, Kyle Harrison, who's nasty. CJ, 
He's on pace for 60 home runs and 60 stolen bases. Jacob Young, he's been using his elite speed very well. He stole second in the fifth inning. That gave him three stolen bases before the sixth came around, which he was basically pulling in Ronald Acuna Jr. By the way, he's now 17 for 17 to begin his career with stolen base attempts. CJ, he went the other way. He scores Jacob Young. But here comes the Giants. Ahmed, he shoots one the other way, and he scores easy. Make it two after that one got away. Out of nowhere, it's now a tie ball game, but Trey Lipscomb, he's going to steal the lead back on a sack fly. It's now back to a two-run lead. Riley Adams, he scores Jesse Winker. Washington's closer, uh, Kyle Finnegan, he's got to be shortening life expectancies of Nationals fans across America because every single appearance is wild. He's got the bases loaded, nobody out, the dribbler to get the out at home, and did he get it? He, of course he got it. That double play ends a pretty fun game. Kyle now has four saves despite a five and a half ERA. The Giants, they slip to four and eight. The Nationals are five and six. If the Rockies win this game, I think the Giants will be in last place, but a Diamondbacks win would suck as well. So it's kind of a lose-lose if you're a Giants fan. Corbin, he's been struggling. He finally got on the board with his first home run. He has two RBIs through 11 games. Gabriel Moreno, he doubled a deep right and Walker turned on that inside sinker. He sent it back up the middle for an RBI. The Rockies, they answered immediately with a run. Ryan McMahon with an RBI rounder and the former Rocky got it back they got Randall Grichik to face lefties but there you go he's going yard off of the righty Cal Quantrill that's a nice little surprise Colorado they're not going away they're like that annoying little fruit fly in your house that never goes away Diaz he missed it which worked out actually because that's an RBI infield single there was a meeting on the mound to figure out what's next and Merrill he got Nolan Jones looking his day is done the Arizona Penn stepped up and the Snakes actually got their first save of the year their five game losing streak is officially over and watch they're about to go on a run now Detroit is going to try and stop Pittsburgh from being MLB's third team to 10 wins. Torkelson, he singled in the game's first run, and it could have been more, but the perennial gold glove candidate, Cabrian Hayes, he kept it at one. He's so unstoppable. He's a vacuum over there. Pittsburgh, they compounded the pain. That's a home run from Edward Olivares. He's been very good. Look at Javier Baez. That glove does not slump, at least because his bat has been slumping. Alika Williams answered with a web gem of his own over that shortstop for the Pirates. More web gems. Cabrian robs Detroit, and then Detroit robs Pittsburgh. Parker Med Meadows, he left his feet, he made the grab, but you can't rob that one. Edward Olivares, he's hitting well over 300, and he has three home runs now. Thank you, Kansas City. The Pirates are looking ready for 10 wins. They have David Bednar on the bump, but he had a rare misstep. He allowed multiple to get on. The ball got away. The Tigers actually tied it up, and no way that's going to drop. Kerry Carpenter got it to drop. He bloops one in. Jake Rogers, he found a hole. The hit parade would not stop. It's 5-3 Tigers. O'Neal Cruz is going to try and save them. Nope. The Tigers, they seal it. Cleveland is closing in on 10 wins as well. They're at 8-2, and two, but that's a rough start for Logan Allen. They found themselves up 3-0, talking about the White Sox. Lennon Sosa, he doubled down the line. And Andrew Vaughn, he's always good for coming up clutch with runners in scoring position. One scores, and Corey Lee, he's breaking out. His defense has been very impressive, and he's hitting 375 on the year. He singles in another. Kevin Pillar, he wanted more. I didn't even know that he was on the White Sox, and he belly flopped in for a double. It's now 5-0 White Sox, but here comes the Guardians. Josh Naylor, that's a 2 run blast. Tyler Freeman, he's sitting 400 on the year with runners in score position. He scores Jose. Quan, he made it 5-4 to four after a single in the fourth inning. And let's see if he can score. J-Ram, he turned on a sinker. Quan, he scampers around and he does tie it at 5-5. All of that was for nothing though as Scott Barlow turned into Scott Bar blow this game. Two score on that Fletcher double. He got a little bit greedy. He was thrown out at third and Michael Kopech, my god. He was the Terminator yesterday. Two shutout, four strikeouts. He was throwing 101, 102. He's probably best as a reliever. He can empty the tank. That's his second save of the year. This was a very long recap. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the web gems. And he sends that one twisting in the gap in left center field once again. Oh. And a First pitch here in the third is spanked to left center by Harrison Bader. Made a big turn. He is going to try for two. And he's out. Reyes hits it well. Ward chases after it. Slides and makes the catch. Five ball center field. Bellinger moving to his left. Makes the catch. Bogarts is going to tag. Here comes the throw. Tag. Ow! Punt try. It's a beauty. Arenado bare hand. Throws to first and got it. Yoshida on the first pitch. Short right field. Kip a long way out there. Slide.